Hello everyone! Actually, I've worked right off the bat. That is beautiful! Welcome to episode 2 of our Short Draft Chasers. Uh, this episode is featuring Amaya's character, Wells. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the party. So, uh, at the beginning of our session range... That I am currently not over its full notes. Uh, I would like you to give me a... Go with an Arcana check. Five. Five. All right. You notice that, yeah, there there is something up with your sword. Last time we left off your, like, it's been a couple days. We've already started working on making this manor up and running. Uh, and your wing of the building uh, at the, uh, the couple dining room living areas are being converted into essentially a guild hall with small offices. And uh, up in the upper area, you're setting up your proper office for it. But in the original office, there were a good amount of papers. Uh, some of these papers were, you know, the ones that you guys had talked over last time, the contracts, stuff like that. But one that catches your eye is a note mentioning that uh, a Sanso Lisbon pays for protection on the docks uh, over in Mandan, which is the closest uh, large town. It's the one that you guys came through when you uh, showed up here. After a few days of preparation range, uh, the four of you, you, uh, Amaya, cool. It started its timer a little bit before. So, uh, apologies for technical difficulties. But, uh, this call is going to be running through a little bit of a moment. Sorry, everyone. I'm going to send you back to the opening range, and I'll just edit this later. And basically run that through. Cool. Pausing. Huzzah! Everything's working properly quickly right off the bat. Just have to do one last little lean up here to see that button. We are set. And this means I have to do a little bit of editing later, but you know what? We're ready. So, the four of you are going to be heading down to the town. And by four, I mean it's going to be you. 
uh, Wells, Dionysus, uh, Sorka, and you are being escorted by your favorite knight in the world, Tala. As Wraith is staying behind and watching over the uh, work on the manor itself. The trip down is actually fairly quiet. Uh, you're able to take a few of the papers with you to try and get something sorted out. Uh, you've basically made a makeshift book out of them. Uh, among these note ranges are the fact that it looks like some jewelry and metals actually do pass through. And you've seen that some of them are currently in the, or were, in the uh, coffers and the manor. A lot of it's going away. Like the amount that I had mentioned at the end of last session that the party is going to have, that's after renovations. Uh, you easily had four to five times that amount in those coffers. Uh, the, this manor hasn't properly seen any maintenance alone, let alone repairs in what looks to be over two to three years. These people occupied it and just didn't care. The roof over our heads, large enough to be able to keep us together and safe. Don't care. <laughs> also, fairly central location. You get... You're not that far off of the main road. It's maybe with cart, half an hour ride up the main drive. On foot, it takes longer, but meh. When you get into town, uh, you you feel that twinge from your sword, but it's not directly prominent at the moment. Uh, just leaving that in the back of your head. Um, but uh, you do have the information for uh, trying to go to the docks. Uh, which would you like to do more over? Uh, do you want to like check for, see who runs the docks? Do you want to try and find locations for setting up uh, a in-this-town guild uh, that can connect with the uh, uh, guild hall that's going to be up inside the manor. Go for a drink, go fishing, go for a swim. It's your character. Do what you want. Uh, I would say um, check on the dock, see who's uh, running that. Okay. Give me a investigation real quick. Uh, three. Three. As a note, there's no failing this particular one. It's just a how long does it take you to find who you're looking for. Uh, and it takes you good half hour. Uh, everyone keeps pointing you in directions of, oh yeah, uh, Dockmaster is that way. Uh, you go down that way. Oh yeah, Dockmaster was here, but they went over towards the silos uh, not that long ago. And you do a bit of walk around back and forth. And after a bit of time, you do see someone with a uh, guild badge on their hip. Uh, you recognize it as a merchant guild uh, badge. She's a, like, early middle-aged woman, uh, human. Uh, stands about five, seven, and she has, uh, braided red hair and that comes down to, if she probably let it be undone, probably be about her shoulders. And you hear her just talking back and forth with a couple people on the docks before uh, holding a clipboard that is well overstuffed with paperwork. What do you do? Uh, yeah, if that's the case, I would go over 
to her to her um are you the dark ma master yes uh Sanso lisbon at your service and you are i'm wells downswan um downswan oh i've got a shipment that's come through uh one of the downsworn ships uh, is that what you're referring on here uh yes all right uh looks like that ship sails in tomorrow morning uh there's a ship that's chartered underneath that uh the jasper has chartered in for uh materials with that Um, is there anything else I can help you with in the meantime? Were you able to hear what I had? Uh, what? Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes my mic doesn't catch up everything. Because you are affiliated as, uh, as a small reminder for Wells, you are affiliated as a uh, guild master at this point. Okay. Um... And currently, she is under the impression that the only thing that you're interested in is your sh is the ship with your materials on it. This is the first time she has met you. Uh, uh yes. Um, uh, uh, yeah, um, I'm, uh, yes, I'm one of the new barons here, and so... I'm currently working on setting up the merchant guild. Merchant guild here and everything. Yes. Um, the couple of the elders had talked about that for uh, that we have some new uh, overseers. Uh believe Vidalis was the one that took out that contract for getting that signed. And you're one of the ones that's going to take up that position. Yes. Didn't realize I was talking with someone who actually had authority in the area. Mm -hmm. Apologies, sir. So, setting up a uh, guild route range. Well, Currently, due to recent happenstance over the past year, uh, most of the uh, merchant guild, well, most guild work in general is done out of a warehouse uh, just down this way. Uh, it is it's the best I can do. Also, my little place is kind of attached to it, so makes it easier. Don't have to pay rent on some place that you own. But you know, the Mariner's Guild, uh, any contact with the Merchant's Guild, 
And of course the uh Dox Guild are all we really have contact here with. And I'm de facto guildmaster for all three of those at the moment. But enough of my uh, story range. How is that I can help you with setting up the guild things? I, the, obviously, you'll have access to uh, my guild information. Um, uh, yeah, I guess with how since I'm new at all, um, uh, yeah, just having some assistance with um, getting to know everything that's currently going on right now, uh, what there is that needs to be done at the moment, so I can get to working on that. Um, setting up patrol for trade routes would be my first request. The farthest that we can get is Vesper. And they don't do a lot of trade recently. But there is some there's a small problem that we've been having. Um, I've noticed anyway. There's a group that I'm guessing rumors of a group called the Dark Rats. They've routed a lot of ships to other docks, ones that I didn't set up. And those shipments were already, would get re flagged by the Duke. And you have men here. I want to make sure that when we get shipments that they stay they go to where they're supposed to it's cost us so much money somehow we were able to get a anonymous donation uh mid last year and we will finally get a third silo set up it's not the same dimensions so it makes me a little irked but it is still a step in our proper direction and we're finally able to add enough grain and material for being able to pass along for the harder seasons but as long as i can make sure that our shipments are safe. That is all I can ever hope. And then, uh, out of character, like with dementia of the note regarding protection, uh, is that what this is kind of referring to, or? It sounds like the, uh, the payment of protection was a you you see notes like this cross uh your desk before it's a it's an extortion measure you pay us so that way we don't hurt you okay. you keep your job and your knees as long as we keep most of your gold kind of thing luckily being in a guild you've had uh, you've had it easy enough of It's being in a guild gives you access to things usually. Okay. Uh, yeah. As a note, you can tell that uh, this woman, despite being, uh, I'm pretty sure, a fair bit older than you. How old is Wells again? 
25. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's she's visibly older than you. Uh, despite that, she looks like she's... The paperwork shows that she's been here for a while. Her demeanor kind of seems like new person on job. Okay, um, yeah, speaking of these stock rats, um, do you happen to know uh, where they're located, where they're stationed at? I knew that at the hotel, the guards that actually cared about our place. Hopefully, hopefully, now that they don't have added protection, we can deal with it, but all I know is that their leader goes by the moniker K.R. Hmm. That's it. No one that works the docks knows anything about dock rats, aside from the actual rats on the wharf. That's the one thing I don't like about living on the wharf. Okay, um... Then... Yeah, if that's the case, um... Hopefully now that, um... Hopefully now that I'm here to help with um, getting things back on track. Hopefully, uh, we can uh, deal with this and get things, as you said, uh, here, staying here, uh, getting shipments here, and having them stay here safely. Yes, though it also does help that from what we've been hearing that the Duke being here uh, being gone will be safer mm -hmm. and it was his men that were rustling that through oh i think that uh this probably officially belongs to you and she holds out the uh badge to you thank you uh, it belonged to my predecessor, and when he left, I kind of stepped up. I've I worked the dock since I was, well, small things here and there, but in a couple of sun and a couple of moons. I'll be one step closer to 40 seasons. 40 seasons, my God. By the roses, that is. You never get used to the prospect of being old. As a player note, uh, most people uh, that you've come across, not everyone, uh, refers to either a full rotation as either a full sun or uh, a set of seasons. So with that information, you can glean that she's in her late 30s. So she's been at this job for Um, are you wanting to see any of the operations that I've tried to keep afloat? Uh yes, that would be um that would be helpful. All right. And she will walk you to the uh, it's just a little ways down the docks. Uh, as you're walking, you see uh, Dionysus walking 
with a yoke and two barrels on them that has some grain in them uh, alongside a fairly unusual sight for you, which is a half elf. <laughs> you've you've seen half elves before. They're rare, but they happen. Uh, as you know, the creation of a half elf needs the gods or a high level caster to intervene. So down the docks, uh, a little ways you can come across a reasonably sized warehouse and uh, on the uh, edge of it, it looks to be like a office kind of building. Uh, over there is my current living situation. And here, she opens up the doors. And as she does so, a rat scurries out past her foot. And she just lets out a like defeated sigh as she finishes opening up these... Uh, two sliding warehouse doors. This is what we use as a guild hall for now. As you walk in, there is visible dust in the air. Uh, the skylights are letting in a fair amount of light. There is stacks of crates and boxes and barrels and there is rope that has been like mooring ropes tied to like section off areas over here is where we set up most of our stuff like uh additional foods that I don't have to worry about the silos uh over here we have uh our receiving be done uh, over here is our received area uh, back here we have our uh, stuff to be shipped out uh, again um, down this way over here is a small office it's where most of the dock workers uh, have their breaks when they choose to not take it on the docks or at the Black Barrel. Um, down this way, uh, a few of the dock workers have set up cots uh, over there. Uh, the shops haven't really been doing that great, so more people are becoming either dock workers or leaving. As she's pointing out, like, the receiving pile is massive. Like, the stuff to be checked in is... It's a daunting mountain. Uh, you've seen cargo ships that come into uh, Sundera that have unloaded this amount alone. And the size of the docks here show that a ship of that size couldn't dock here at all. Uh, the size of the checked-in pile is very small. Uh, as is the shipping area. We have space for renovations, what have you. I've barely been keeping my head above water with setting this stuff apart and getting it to work. But, uh, yes, that is that is currently our situation. Um, I have seen people petition for opening shops here, but they hear the situation, they put themselves on a hold. 
So, hopefully I can send out letters next time we have a ship. So, uh, any questions I can answer? Uh, were you the only one doing uh, the receiving and uh, in charge of the operations here? Officially, yes. Um, I've had uh, Victor help me, uh, Fairmount. Um, and occasionally, uh, their great grandparent uh, would swing by and help, as well as their, uh, as well as his grandfather. Um, very nice of uh, Samuel to come through their great grandparent. They are. Uh, Samuel Thatcher is on the uh, Council of Elders that have covered this town for nice. This particular city council has been here for I want to say 20 seasons. Vidalis uh, is the most recent to be appointed. Um, so out of anyone that I have a bit of unease about myself is, uh, Lucas. Gnomes are I try to not be the dumbest person in the room, but I He can't help it, he's a smart and very elderly man, so I'll admit my insecurities where I have them. Uh, and we've had some protection help from the uh, Moonkissed tribe. That was before they moved out towards the forests again. Uh, their their leader was appointed onto the council gosh it's been 25 seasons. Uh a uh, orcish woman, uh, Hagla. Uh, she hasn't. I know that her tribe, uh, her tribal name is not Moonkist, but she refuses to tell me what it is. I will let that be. Anyways, so, um, what are you wanting to do with this building? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if anything, uh, yeah, I think, um, there definitely needs some work to be done, uh, cleaning up the place, and then just making sure that we go through all of those, uh, all that paperwork and checking it over, checking it over, since I imagine that from what you told me, uh, it wasn't easy to do by yourself, so I can help with that. Be much appreciated, my lord. It's... Dealing with a higher up that is accommodating is a bit unusual, 
but nothing unheard of. Um, I I do uh have a confession to make, and uh, I I have been a guild member for a bit of time, but because of the issues most of the dock workers are guild members I'm part of the I'm actually in m multiple guilds at this moment I'd like to focus on just two but uh, I'll do what I need to but none of us on the docks have had the finances to pay our dues in quite a while. Uh, several s several seasons, to be precise. Um, I don't ask for favors, I just ask for a, uh, a lot of installment plans once we actually can get things Moving again? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if that's the case, then um, yeah, I'll make sure make sure that you get the proper funding and and finan financing. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Hit my system is doing that now. Uh, we do have other uh, work range. Um, the guild that I'm wanting to try and keep connection on is uh, I'm more than willing to stay on in the uh, Dark Runners Guild. That is it's the one I signed up with first. Um, but having access to the Merchants Guild allows me to actually officially take cuts for things that come through. If that is okay with you. Um, yeah, that's perfectly fine. And I'm more than willing to sign out of any needed contract for uh, the Mariners Guild that I've had to be in charge of, as well as the uh, uh, the Jewelers Guild. There used to be a jeweler in town, but winter before last, they hopped on a ship and never returned. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely want to take control of the jeweler skills since I am a jeweler as well, so... Very nice, very nice. Uh, yes, um, if we get the funding, I can start getting things sorted out here, and if we can get help, that would be nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I'll make sure that gets done then. Thank you very much. Uh, is there anything else I can help you with, sir? Uh, let's see. Um, hmm. I believe not at the moment you've told me all that I needed, and so I just need to make sure to go over everything and make sure that uh, I start getting things uh, done and organized. All right. 
Oh, I will get back to it. Goes through a couple bits of paper before bowing to you and heading back over to the massive pile. Where do you want to go next? As a small player reminder, areas that you have personally been in in this town are the dock, now this warehouse, and the inn. You guys quickly left, and you spent the better part of one of the weeks, uh, actually the past two weeks, uh, getting the manor sorted out. Okay, um, if that's the case, um, the inn is different from the Black Barrel, right? The Black Barrel is an inn and tavern. Ah. Okay, um, then yeah, if that's the case, I think I'm going to want to visit the uh, Black Barrel Tavern just to see what it's like. Uh, the kind of patrons and people that visit there, as well as possibly look into the Dock rats. Uh, K.O. All right. Well, you've been over to the Black Barrel before. Mm -hmm. On entering, you do see uh, the owner, Marcus. It's still early-ish in the day. Uh, there's a couple patrons, and uh, a bar lad is running around. Oh, by running, like he's walking at a fairly decent pace. And there's only, like, five people in here. Uh, the most notable person that you can see is a uh, dwarven woman. I'm going to get the... going to copy the image real quick. And send that over to you. Because it is reference, and I do not own this reference. But. Yeah, she is fairly stout. And she is sitting at a table with a half-elf. Uh, the half-elf looks, uh, has graying hair. Uh, they are, they have, like, some facial hair, like, not a lot, but what they have is well-trimmed, it's a bit of a goatee, and a thin mustache, and, you know, they're dressed pretty reasonably well, uh, and they are also in a... Like, knee-high skirt and heels. With a, like, fairly nice top. Those are the... Uh, aside from Marcus, those are the only real noticeable, like, odd-ish people. Everyone else looks to be either dock workers on a lunch break. Uh, and most of the people in here are human. In fact, you're noticing that, like, 90% of the town is humans. And you've seen some dwarves. Uh, and at this point, you've now seen only two half-elves in this town. What would you like to do? Mm -hmm. Marcus is currently moving tables around and cleaning up a little bit. Okay, um, if that's the case, uh, and if anything, I'm probably just going to find an empty table to sit down at and uh, get a drink, uh, start making some notes regarding everything I was told back at the warehouse, get an idea of what everything I need to do, like make it a list, 
yeah. reading a list and then basically just um, watching, hearing especially anything going on around me in the tavern. Give me a perception check. Uh, out of curiosity, are you day drinking? Um, let's see. You said it's morning, right? Or is it like... Late morning. Okay. Like we're pat um, or coming up on noon. Honestly, yeah, probably not like uh, drinking per se. Probably just drinking some like uh, water or some. Just like drinking like water or something, something not alcoholic. All right. Yeah, they bring over a, uh, the bar lad brings over a cup. Uh, anything to eat, sir? Um, uh, just something, um, just something light, like a sandwich or something. Something light. I do. And he walks off into the back. Give me, uh, so what was your perception, Jack? Let's see. Ugh, yeah. Three. Three? Uh, the, you're mostly focused on your notes. Uh, things that come to mind off the top of your head are like a to-do list range is try and get more shops open of kinds. Uh, down the road, you saw a bakery. Uh... And you saw Dionysus sitting there, uh, like, walking up to a table at the end. Uh, you also notice that there's a, uh, looks to be a very run-down small apothecary. Uh, close to the end of the docks that you were at, uh, as you were heading out of the warehouse again, uh, you see Sorka going into that building. Uh, there is a general store, but from what you've seen, most of these places are lacking a lot. Looks like they've been skimmed by, uh, for a lot of materials over the years. Uh, and as far as setting up merchant and trade route stuff you're probably going to need to call in for like send out a letter to get someone to help with uh doc organization you probably have a good idea of a good doc foreman like the person who runs the actual like high end point but as far as like the so, you know, you have a good idea of a boss, but you could always bypass her and go to someone else if you'd like. Uh, but what you also need is a manager. And that is something that you can, you have the contacts to be able to outsource that. Uh, one of the things that was sent with you is a book with a list of names and, like, name job title and what uh, area they're out of the largest section is blue rose hmm. you have a couple names from a couple other baronies but not many most of the other names look to be just a forwarding address kind of thing this person will get it to whomever it needs to be And I will get you an actual list list of some of those names and let you pick out of them. <laughs> After a little while, the, the food comes out. It's a uh, fairly light stew. Uh, and you see like these floating meatballs in it. When you try the meatballs, they're actually like a very smooth consistency, and they are fish. Hmm. 
they are fish balls. And, you know, it's got some seaweed, cabbage, uh, a little bit of onion. This is all stuff that you're pretty sure has been brought in not too far back. Mm -hmm. As you're going through your food, you do hear that second voice twinging in the back of your head. And you're able to hear, for the first time, both voices at the same time. The one that you know of as your sword. And what sounds to be the elf from earlier this month. I'm the one who granted him his power. You, on the other hand, are a nuisance. If I am so much of a nuisance, then why are you feeding off of me? More so, why is it that he can keep me around in, in general? If he wants to feed off of you, he can. But that is his prerogative, his choice. I, I point the sword and let him feed. That is our contract. He feeds. I don't hunt. You are currently still muted. Yeah, I just... Hearing all this, I try and... Turn it out and just um, continue with uh, eating and doing what I'm doing. Uh, trying to keep my fast busy, busy to tune out those voices. Physically so annoyed. Yeah, give me a wisdom saving throw. Oh boy. Hey, finally a decent score for once. 16. 16. Yeah, you're able to tune them out really well. You also notice that as you're tuning them out, you almost not Fully physically, but it you kind of feel as though you have, like, just literally put your hand over the mouth of someone. Like, just to shut them up. And as you do so, there is a bit of... Like, as you're reaching for your cup again, you notice that the shadow specifically for your hand from about wrist forward... Looks to be a little bit darker on the table than normal. Not by much, but it is a touch darker. As if you have another hand, like, casting a shadow over top of yours. Yeah, so I just... Mm. Yeah, so I just continue to uh, to eat, drink, and do what I've been doing. Alright. After a bit of time, you hear uh, uh, you, uh, you see the dwarf and half-elf get up and... The half-elf person walks over to the dwarf and gives them a big hug 
and despite the very obvious height difference, uh, this half elf in heels stands at just over six foot, and the dwarf is a good solid four feet. And during the hug, just like lifts them completely off of their feet for a second. And you hear the dwarven woman say, Next time, you get to pick where we're having lunch, old friend. Well, if it's anything like we've had before, we might have to keep coming here. I'm getting a bit tired of going to the bakery every other day. I know the others like to have meetings there, but we'll convince them to come here at some point. Now. Please give my regards to your young ones and I will see you next time, Quaz. And she lets out a bellowing laugh and yes, yes, and tell your grandson that uh, tell your great-grandson he needs to get off the docks more often. Next time, uh, Samuel. You hear? Yes, yes, yes. Give me a quick history check. You have advantage. Ooh, nice. Uh, dirty 20? Dirty 20. Uh... These two seem to be, uh, these two are, like, through paperwork that you've gone through, these two are members of the uh, Elders Council. Okay. Uh, the uh, half-elf with uh, light brown hair. Uh, it uh, is probably the Samuel Thatcher mentioned in the notes of elders. And that would definitely make the older woman, uh, the older dwarf woman, uh, Quaz Stonewright. Do you need me to spell out her first name? Uh, yeah. Q-U-A-Z. And then stone write is one word, and it's stone, and then write as in writing. So it's a W-R-I-G-H-T. And then traditional spelling for Samuel and Thatcher. They both look fairly old. Hence why Elders is part of the uh, their council name. Yeah, she is definitely over 400. You've met dwarves. They naturally live to be about 500. On the average. Give or take a decade. What would you like to do? Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, yeah, if anything, probably uh, continue eating, uh, continue with my nose, and then uh, now, especially taking note. Um, to work on like opening up more shops after hearing their conversation. Um, uh, yeah, just basically doing uh, doing busy work until I've I've finished my meal and I feel like um, 
I've done all that I can with writing down notes and things that need to be done. All right. Uh, as you're writing down notes, uh, give me a another wisdom check. No, a saving Agreed. throw. Yeah. Uh, 13. 13. You're feeling like the room is like fading a little bit and you have a you're feeling a pull on your sword. Uh, you, you've had these feelings in the past. It feels like your sword is trying to contact you like directly. This has only happened two other times in your life. One of them, you bury that memory as best as you can. And the time after that was just after you had woken back up. Right now. Uh, okay, if that's the case, uh, I'll pay for my uh, I'll pay for my meal. I'll leave uh, leave a tip before uh, packing up my notes, and then uh, heading out to Tavern to go find, like, a secluded alley or something. All right. You're able to find a fairly secluded alley pretty easily. Uh, yeah, making sure that no one's around first. I'll go into the alley and then look down at my source, like, what do you want? We need a conversation, face to face. <sighs> okay, fine, let's do that now then. Sit down, don't need you hurting yourself. Mm. All right, I'll sit down on the floor then, like, probably, like, next to hiding behind any sort of, like, boxes or barrels in the way, so that way. No know. one can see you. Yep. Yeah. You'll do that really easily, and you're starting to feel that, like, tug again. Do you want to make a wisdom saving throw, or do you want to fail? Um, um, yeah, I'll fail it. The world around you goes dark. And for the only the second time in your life, and you barely remember it the first time, you are now standing in a large room. The floor beneath you is black marble with shocks of purple throughout it. And the sky above you is a ruby red. It looks to be actually made of stone. And standing before you is a very shadowed creature that looks to be made of a combination of shadow, smoke, and blood. And their eyes... You cannot fully comprehend this statement as a human, but their eyes glow black. And... Sitting in a fairly nice chair is the High Elf in a long uh, black coat with white frills going up, uh, like white lace that trims the edge around the collar, uh, silvered buttons going down. 
and a very nice suit underneath and looks to be just flipping through a book. Somehow you brought this one into my home. I understand that our deal is you feed me. Seeing as I did not get to my intended place. And I give you strength. One meal every week. But this one, this one doesn't feed me. The elf is just sitting there. Well, if I had known that you needed to be, uh, to have food, I would have brought some snacks. But it seems like your human compatriot doesn't understand that. Where I come from, it is not a problem dealing with things like this. But you, young human, you stepped into my business. And you ended up killing me for it. Where are you from? Uh, Blue Rose. That is a fairly large barony. What I ask, uh, what I mean is, where are you? What city do you hail from? Uh, Sendera. Joyous. <sighs> Tell me... Do you have Do you have ones that you wish you could go back to there? Or did you just come all this way to kill me and then go back home? No, of course I have loved ones back home but me and my comrades i guess uh ended up uh ended up becoming the barons of this new land and the problem is is that the duke was uh claiming as there so we had to so we had to make sure to get it back You know, the Duke was smart. Good with business. Admittedly, not all the things that he did was in the best business, but... He knew how to week get things done. 
tell me, do you think you have what it takes to keep this land together? Not get it picked apart piece by piece as the Baronies try and squeeze in on each other? Of course. Uh, with, uh, with all of us working together, uh, we'll make sure that nothing happens to it. Do you think you can handle when the lieutenants show up? Of course, no matter who comes, we'll make sure to uh, defend our barony. But do you think you will survive that encounter? Your healer, perhaps. The favored child, probably. But you, alone, survive? You have your dealings with your patron of a sword. But do you know what true power through blood can be? I'll make sure that I survive. Question is, will I survive? If that one has its way with me, you'll just eat my power and leave me to and leave me to rot. What happens to my body doesn't matter. We elves pass our lineage and our power and our strength through the soul. And as you can clearly see, I'm not going anywhere. My afterlife has been taken from me. So, I want payment. If I'm stuck here. Might as well make it worth my while. What kind of payment? Oh, it's nothing too terribly sorted. I just want to be able to help you on occasion. What kind of help exactly? There's an elder in my lineage. Far, far back. Started off with the powers of shadow, but that shadow turned dark. Have you heard of anything called void magic? Not that I know of. If you can master it, oh, joys you can have. Nothing can stand in your way. It's actually one of the reasons I came here to be able to practice, to get stronger. You may be short-lived be, uh, as a mayfly, but I 
want you to continue my research, to continue my power, and use it. I want someone else to experience what I couldn't. And if that one has said any speck of truth, I can feel that through you. What exactly were you planning on doing with your, with your power? What were you researching? I just want to see what my upper limits are. To see if I can actually attempt to touch the void. Be able to reach those heavens. Many climb, be reach the top. I only know the definitive existence of one that can actually reach that top. But I wanted to be the next. What do you say? Is that all you want? Is just for me to inherit this ma this magic and make it grow? Yes. All I want is to see someone reach that peak and to be able to possibly feel it vicariously at this point myself so what do you say do we have a deal He held out his hand to shake yours. I'll put out my hand as well to shake it. Give me a charisma check. Uh, just straight charisma, or? I mean, we can technically call it a charisma saving throw, saying I believe you have proficiency on those. Yeah. Yeah. Well, call it a saving throw. You're not trying to save from anything, really. But we'll just call it a saving throw. Uh, 25. Shiza. <laughs> As your hand grasps his... You feel physically, uh, you like feel physical weight, like not a lot, like, you know, a few pages of paper, but you feel the physical weight of the shadows on your body. It is mildly uncomfortable, but 
probably for the most part of the fact that you're noticing your actual shadow for the first time and the shadows that you cast. In gamer terms, after the uh, uh, after this hiatus point and we get into our regular sessions again, for one month of in-game time, you will add 1d6 of necrotic damage to all of your attacks. But spells and attacks? All of your attacks will have an extra d6 necrotic damage. And I'm going to be raising that DC next time. <laughs> I thought, oh, it's not going to be that hard. DC 15 to only get a D4? Yeah, that's a reasonable range. Make it harder. DC 20 gets you a D6. 25. <laughs> I forget. Occasionally. Don't make the warlock do my charisma. <laughs> what, do you have a plus 19 to that shit? No, my charisma saving throw is a plus 8. Is that including level 5? Yes. Because my charisma is already maxed, so. Right. <laughs> okay. As you feel this energy flooding around you, you start to the world that you're currently in starts fading. And you're noticing something. Your bottom, lower back, and neck all hurt a little bit. You're also noticing that the sun is rising. You have been seated in this alley for overnight. You're also coming to the realization that thankfully this is not too terribly far away from the tavern, uh, from the Black Brawl Tavern, because you need to use the restroom, you're extremely hungry, and those are probably your priorities. Give me a... Athletics check. Ew. Mm. Ah, I guess. Five. Give me a constitution saving throw. Twelve. Twelve. You are very glad that you have a extra set of clothes with you. Uh, we're going to skip over that statement. Uh, you understand... We'll just get that. Yes, I'm adding a little level of realism into the world. And you've been sitting there. This is the first time. Hopefully the last. Next time you'll probably remember to, you know, seat yourself closer someplace. Oh, and not do it in the middle of the friggin' Yeah. You'll have places where you can do this a bit safer next time. In multiple ways. Also, this is the first time that you've ever blacked out for this long. And are not waking up covered in blood. So you can tell that you had been legitimately sitting there all night. Also, your clothes were already a little bit damp. Waking up with the morning dew off of the lake. You're able to get changed, get the day, uh, get ready for the day. It's morning. You still have a day of gameplay, or most of a day of gameplay. What would you like to do? Um. Uh, yeah. If anything, I think I'm gonna start working on doing some of the stuff on my list, the notes regarding. Uh, what needs to be done. 
get started on working on that. All right. As you're working on getting the uh, bits started, I know we can just ignore the middle part of the screen for temporarily. Uh... <laughs> The uh, the better part of the morning goes by relatively quickly. Uh, as you're doing your uh, checkup stuff, you're able to meet up with uh, Senso again and get more of that sorted out. Uh, if you want, I can do off camera some of the noodly bits. Uh, but if you're not interested in the noodly bits, uh, we can just hand wave of that if you would like. I'm very much a fan of the noodly bits. <laughs> it's not necessary if you want to do any of the noodly bits off camera. But uh, noodly bits include the getting set up for merchant things. Yeah, personally, off camera. Uh, well, it, it's going to be off camera no matter what. But if you want to not even deal with any of the extra noodly bit stuff and just hand wave it of, I will let the DM. The DM knows that Wells knows how to do all of this. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to have to deal with all the noodliness of it myself. Uh, yeah. But we didn't discuss that properly off camera. You notice late morning, uh, there is a ship that is making its way in towards dock. Uh, the front end is a uh, bird uh, figurehead. And as you're sitting there watching it come in, uh, it is mentioned by Sanso that this is the Jasper. Uh, you hear people running a little bit from the northern part of town. Uh, and as you turn to look to see what is going on in general, you see Dionysus just take off that direction. Uh, and not too terribly far behind him, uh, you see Tala and several guards. So you're able to easily just you understand that that's going to be dealt with. And your ship is incoming. The ship comes in and docks. And the gangplank is sent up. Uh, one person comes off the ship, looks to be a uh, Winjinasi. And they start talking with Sanso, and the person not too terribly far behind them is a high elf. Winter, would you like to introduce your character? I would. I am trying a new sound setup right now because my current sound setup is down. I apologize. I hope you hear me fine. Uh, not too great. Let's try it without the mask if we are able to. Let's see. Oh, well. How about now? Does that help? Much! You'd be surprised Much. what a little bit of fabric can do for you. Oh, yes, yes. Unfortunate. Uh, I... Why would you pretend the mask is there? The mask is there. It's just not there. The mask is part of your character's work. Yes. Okay, so I'm guessing that you are cosplaying as your character. Yes. Okay, cool. So you see this individual range, uh, High Elf, walking down the gangplank. I can hear oh your sleeve. Ah. Moving that. Sorry, my current shot is down. I don't have the normal capabilities I need to do. I apologize. It's all right. We're, we're doing all right. 
Oh my, what what lovely new land. So much to try. I wonder. Oh, I better find me a place to stay. I'll head off the I'll head off or further off of the boat, away from it, uh knowing my stuff will be taken care of. Uh, start looking around trying to find any find any one fast direction. Uh, out of curiosity, uh, I can't remember if we had this set up for your character. You have a, uh, you are associated with the guild, correct? Yes. Wait, no, no, not, I, I'm associated, I'm not in a guild. You're associated, associated. but not in. Yes. Right. Um, so you at least have paperwork that is being mentioned out loud by someone else of, you know, where do we send this? Uh, if I remember right, you have a cart, correct? Correct. I do have a cart. All right. All right. I'm picking up an echo. See if I can fix that uh, delay. This is how I fix my I'm echo. That's of me. Oh, I didn't think to try that. You know, I probably could have went with that option. It would have been way easier. Everyone has their own thing. I'll just mute when I'm not talking. Wells, you see this very interesting looking individual heading down the uh, finishing up the getting off the gangplank and trying to get stuff sorted on the docks themselves. Um, uh, if I remember right, uh, Sansa is dealing with the one. If, um, is dealing with the other one, right? Yes, the Wind Genasi, which you can use uh, after... Very brief introduction. You can tell this is the first mate of the ship. Okay. Uh, hmm. Yeah, if that's the case, um, I think I would be curious about... Uh... This person does appear to be a merchant. Oh. Yeah, if that's the case, um, I would definitely be curious about this... Uh... About that elf. Um, uh, yeah, go up and be like... Um, uh, your emotion, I take it? Uh, yes, yes, I just... God, here, I don't have many wares on me. I hope to get set up here soon. Okay, um, yeah, that would, um, yeah, because we are still currently in the process of getting things set up here as well. So anything that you need, uh, you can come to me for. Thank you. That's much appreciated. Uh, if I if I do need to get a hold of you, where can I find you? Um, yeah, uh, I live in the yeah I live in the manor down the road. But if anything, I'll likely be um, over at the at the guild hall. The guild hall, which is um, in the warehouse here in here in town uh what kind of specialization do you have my specialization uh, primarily deals in outward wear whether you be out on your on adventures sitting in a tavern or at a party but i also sell weapons 
as a secondary. In this case, I fall on hard oh. times. Weapons always seem to be a go-to. Okay, that's good to know then. As the two of you are talking, uh, you see out of the corner of your eye a half-elf just almost sprinting down the docks uh, and then quickly runs up the gangplank. Uh, It's the same one that Dionysus was talking to yesterday. Huh. Okay. And as the camera pans up to be able to see where the uh, half-elf is running to the two of you are able to see at the top of the gangplank a very tall woman. Her long pointed ears uh, holding back her uh, long red hair. Shocks of green in it. Her bright green eyes glistening in the sunlight. Red plate armor uh, down her body with her left arm covered in uh, armor as well, her right arm ex- completely exposed. A very large sword on her back and a very large travel bag floating beside her, held up by a uh, what looks to be two mage hands. And as she steps down the gangplank, she turns to you, Wells. And with a smile says, It's good to see you again. You recognize Sola, having just now come back. This is not the ship she originally came on. And as you're able to, uh, and as you look around trying to see what kind of commotion this might have brought, you're able to see Sorka a little bit off in the distance. And coming in from the northern side, you see Dionysus, flanked by Tala, and what looks to be an undead in a bright yellow coat and a lot of purple clothing. And as the camera pans up to the sky, We're going to call that session. <laughs> Thank you all very much for this uh, joining us. And something I didn't do last session before my little sign off ranges. You're not going to know the exact reasoning for the result of what you're about to do. But, Wells, if you could roll me a D100 real quick. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, 96. Ni- 96? Mm-hmm. Really? <laughs> uh... really? Screw you. All right. That's going to resolve next actual session. Uh, next regular sessions start back up on the 6th for all of those watching. And also for those watching... I'm going to do one of my lovely little plugs. We are still working on getting the kinks worked out for it, uh, and we'll be able to make higher quality range. But we have base stickers now. These will be in both the standard shield as well as circles. Uh, And we are also going to be working on more stuff for adding to a shop that will be launching here hopefully within a month hopefully fingers crossed uh stuff that we're gonna have are uh images like class based images for each of the classes uh, including stuff for dms we're also going to have 
uh, like barony specific uh, images. Like we're going to put the different uh, barons, baronesses, and the Belladrox on stickers for you. Uh, we'll put the, oh, we'll be making Rose Barony coat of arms that you can actually rep yourself. And they'll also have all sorts of other range, uh, stuff for Alphabet Mafia, uh, all across the, uh, lovely colors, as well as, uh, just basic tavern themed wares, uh. And additionally, additionally, all certified guild hall gamers are going to be getting tavern stickers. Like these tavern stickers, as well as some circles, are going to be sent out to all of our guild hall gamers. So, thank you all so much for joining us. We look forward to our next endeavor with you. Remember, be well, roll safe. We'll see you next time.